Hello traders and welcome to today's Bitcoin technical analysis. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Igor and I am a coach at Chart Champions. Um, today I'll try and cover Bitcoin very quickly. Um, I'll try and keep this uh, sweet and short. So without further said ado, let's dive straight into the charts. Okay, so let's remind ourselves where we came from and why did we stall here at uh, forty-seven to forty-eight thousand um, dollars. So Bitcoin, upon hitting this low here, it broke this high here on the left, which meant that the market is now shifting from a bearish structure to a bullish structure upon taking the stops below this low. Right, so as we come up, the one-to-one -one is at the 47, but also here we had the um, higher time frame 382. So as we were hitting the 382, I was alerting my team, don't short yet because the one-on-one -on -one is just above, as I was saying here. 47 pit stop, but then 55 and a week to 58. So those are just like um, higher time frame levels that I'm keeping that i keeping my eye on. But ultimately it was the 47 pit stop and then saying that um, here, we, we, we must not forget the one-on-one. -on -one. At the time we were still at the 382, which is 46,500. That's where we were at the time. And I was saying to the team, don't short just yet because the one-on-one -on -one is where we is where we're going. So here you can see, don't forget the one-on-one -on -one just above it. And then, like I was saying here, yeah, not yet. First, let's stop the 382 shorts. So 382 shorts, everybody that shorted here, instantly underwater as, you know, we go up, hit the 47 level, one-to-one -one for a drop. The drop was also a very good one because this drop was pretty much kind of like anticipated because we had done here the CME gap on the futures markets. So CME gap, which is at 44,800. So I remember saying to the team that I was looking for a 5% drop. This was purely just with that in mind. And the fact that we were just moving up with no significant pullbacks. So moving down seemed the best option here. So the 5% actually turned into an 8% drop and back up to the range high we go again. So after the drop to the CME, um, we could potentially anticipate here a range from the high, range high to the range low. Um, and we actually did that in the end. Uh, I'll just disable these tools so that it makes the chart a bit cleaner. You guys can see that I like to keep my charts clean. So I use the bars in ch instead of the candles because I find them much cleaner um, to the eye. Um, so here, after filling the CME gap, I was expecting like a range to form because you know the markets don't just go up and up and up or down and down and down. You know, we usually and more often than not have you know sideways ranges, for example. Um, so on here, upon hitting this low, I was anticipating that we'd form something like so where 46,900 would be a good magnet to the price. And if Bitcoin was to get there, then we'd watch a reaction above, which was the point of control of the whole range at 47,200. So claim that, bullish, and the high is in play. However, reject, and then what we'll be looking at is the 45,800, which is at the low of the range. So on here, you can see a little bit better. So 46,900 was the magnet that I was talking about with the 47,200, which is like all of this merged together, all this range here at the very top. Uh, so claim bullish, lose bearish. Look for 45,800, which is pretty much in a nutshell exactly what happened after that post was made. So a couple of days later, we then get the 47,200 and then the drop to 45. 800. So pretty um, cool, nice little range uh, there indeed. The best thing about these ranges is that um, they are just so clear and they help you um, understand in, in, in like probabilities where the market um, will give you the best 
you know, traits. So, for example, um, if you were just to simply uh, use a Fibonacci tool split into four sections, uh, like so, but use the weekly, so we'll then go from the, the high, I'll just zoom in for you guys to see better. So let's go from the high of the previous week to the low of the previous week, okay? You then get a fib, Fibonacci split into, um, well, in this case, five. So you've got the top, you've got the low, you've got the midpoint, and then you've got obviously your, your upper 75 and your lower 25. So it's split into four sections. Um, so obviously, when you are in the middle of this range, you wouldn't look to long or short because it is a 50-50% chance. This will definitely help people um, and traders uh, where you wouldn't just long all your portfolio here or short all your portfolio here because it is a 50-50 chance. So for example, yesterday, um, I was saying exactly the same because we were there. This was the midpoint. So if you are longing or shorting here, I mean, it is a flip of a coin. We don't want to do that. We want to wait for that highest probability, which is done here, and for a long, for example, and a highest probability for a short, which is up here. And that is exactly what happened after. So here's the uh, 45, 145 and 47, 183. So fast forward a few hours and we go down to the 45, 135 and boom, go back up to the midpoint. So these ranges can be really helpful and we teach them at Chart Champions. And before I forget, tomorrow, the contender stream is a very special one because Mike will be covering that, but he will also be bringing some champions onto the stream. So stay tuned for that because that's going to be a good one. Uh, also, uh, that can be found at chartchampions.com. And don't forget, uh, George, Epic George, will be doing his uh, daily update tomorrow morning as well. He does that for about an hour, sometimes even a little bit more than that, where you will cover uh, Bitcoin in depth, order flow, and he will cover all the levels as well as answering all the questions at the end of the stream. Um, so big shout out to George, uh, the legend. Um, on Friday, we will then have uh, Victor going over the uh, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and sometimes he covers stocks with the Friday uh, morning update also. And while I'm here, may as well just um, get you guys to follow us on Twitter. Um, you've got myself there, where we usually post some charts, some ideas, um, etc. So don't forget to give us a follow on that. Back to Bitcoin. Um, we are simply today just right now flirting with the uh, daily open. So if I just zoom in for you all to see. So we've got daily open here. Uh, we're literally just flirting with that um, area of um, support right now. Um, for me, the best trades will come above the high at 46,900 and above. Okay. And uh, we could see then a potentially drop to the uh, 45,600. Um, so whichever side gets there first, it's where we obviously trading. So alert set there, alert set there, and we trade this level to level. Um, so potentially we could see something like, you know, sweep the lows, take above the level, and then back down to to the uh, um, um, previous day vol. Um, so that's something I'm keeping my eye on. Alternatively, if we drop here down to the uh, uh, previous day of vol, first, then we could look for the high after. So those two scenarios, um, it's always good to be prepared for, you know, the bullish and the bearish scenario. So let's just keep an eye on those and see how the day progresses. But currently, daily open, always a good level. So um, yeah, very good to keep an eye on there as well. Uh, on the higher time frame, if we could just zoom out to the daily on the more macro um, view, uh, you all probably looking at this sort of like ascending triangle where you've got like the high, the low, the high, the low, obviously the high now and the back test potentially for another break up, for example. Um, this low is very key and important. Lose that, bearish. Hold that as we are now and we could see higher prices. Um, targets for the upside, obviously we have the uh, big strong uh, SR levels. So obviously 50,000 being one of them, below 40,000. So level to level, let's just trade the charts um, and 
that's it.